All right, I'm Matt Jones, and today I'm going to show you how to load your Godot scenes asynchronously. Now, this is a second video. The, this supersedes the previous one because I've reformatted everything and put it inside of a plugin. If you want, and it's on the, now it's on the Godot asset store called the Godot Async Loader. But anyways, what does that actually mean? So, for instance, we have a simple Godot world here with uh, some white terrain on the ground, some uh, buildings, this red building, this blue building, and some uh, plants, uh, some furniture, t a table, some items, we got some oranges and some soda cans, and all, if, if you look in our scene graph on the left here, we have all of this stuff. So the thing is, when it's loading this world scene, it has to load all of this stuff so it blocks the main thread. And let's let's try running it and see how long it takes. All right, so when I click go, we, we got our frame rate up here, up in the uh, top here. You can see that when I click go, it's gonna dip our frame rate most likely. And it, while it loads this world scene, so let me click it. Yeah, see it dipped our frame rate. And if you look down here in the console, I have it measuring. It took 142 milliseconds. That's that's almost 10 frames of it just blocking, completely blocking the main thread, which is really not an acceptable thing to be doing with modern games. So let me, sh let me show you why that happens. So if we click on our, our start button, this is what happens when we click, click uh, the go button. So basically we delete the current scene, um, then we load the world scene, instance the world scene, and then add the world scene to the current tree. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this, um, but basically, no matter what you're doing, it's always going to be this this three steps happening. Even if it's under the hood, behind behind the scenes, Godot is doing this. It's it's got to do these three things, and the problem is all three of these block the main thread. So basically, what what happens is the plugin I've made here will it will load it in a th in a background thread. It'll instance it in a background thread, and then when it goes to add world it will um, it'll look at what's in here. We got terrain, we got buildings, we got items, we got plants. It'll look at these things and take them out of the scene and then it will slowly over time add each one of these to the main scene so it won't block the main thread for, uh, for like any like perceptible amount of time. So let me show you how to actually do that. So click asset lib and go to um, Type. Sorry about that. I'm sitting in a very uh, uncomfortable position because they're, I had to move and I move again, and they're and now they're building a shopping center across the street, so I have to be in the corner here. To All right. So um, anyway, if it doesn't show up when you type async loader, it's it's new, so it's probably not showing up yet. So it's in testing. So click support and go to testing. There we go. Now it shows up. Now I'll click. Click there, and now click download. It's going to download it. And now if we look at the file structure, it's going to put it in the add-ons directory and the uh, Godot async loader folder, so that won't mess up with our file hierarchy. So just click install. And now we have the add-on down in here in our file system for our project. Um, and we have to enable it, project, project settings. Um, plugins and now click enable and uh, what that did is it installed our three auto loads we got scene loader scene adder scene switcher so that's good but oh what's what's this down here we have a bunch of warnings so unfortunately there's there are some issues with the current version of Godot where you have cyclic references project A references project B and project B references project a, so it, it can't figure that out. So for now, the easiest way to get rid of this is just close the project and reopen it, and hopefully we won't have we won't have those uh, warnings. Let me just restart it. Example async. Okay, good. No warnings. So it added all of our stuff, and uh, the plugins enabled. Our auto loads are here. So good. All right, so. What we want to do is when we click go is instead of using this way of of doing it, let's set up let's set up our plugin. So basically, 
I have some code I, I typed out in advance so you don't have to see me uh, slowly typing it here. So basically, if we look at our world back here, we have a bunch of different things. So let's put our stuff in the groups. So for instance, we have buildings, we have terrain, we have plants, we have items, and we have furniture. So let's, let's set up our plugin to have those groups. So we have uh, terrain, building, furniture, plants, item, NPC for the NPCs, and etc. So that's good for now. So let's have it break those up in the groups. So we have uh, the, the array of groups, and then um, we set those here with the scene adder. And then let's make it have a delay of 100 milliseconds. So this will set it up when this start scene is initialized. And then when we click go, it will um, it will use our new scene switcher to load everything. But first, uh, I, I forgot one step. We have to let it know what is in what group. So um, let's see, what's this? This is a barn. Let's go to our barn. Uh, scene it's just a uh, static body with a little mesh and collision shape let's add that to the building group all right and what else do we have here have a, uh, a house it's basically the same let's add that to the building group and what else terrain uh, it's just some CSG boxes. Let's add that to the terrain group. And uh, let's see, our cactuses. Let's put those in the plant group. Basically a uh, static body. All right, what else is left? Oh, we got our Coke cans. Our soda can, I mean. We don't want to infringe there. IP here and let's put it in items and what's left Oh, the oranges let's put this in item and oh, our NPC um, just just a uh, kinematic body um, let's put it in NPC and what oh the the table let's put that in furniture now here's the real test, if I can spell furniture without messing up. Furniture, hopefully that's correct. Okay, so now when I load the scene using this, using our scene switcher, let's see if it, if it works. Click go. And there we go, see it's loading each chunk at a time. Um, so that's cool. And, I have it measuring the amount of time down here in the console, and you can see that uh, I loaded all the terrain first. Each one is basically one millisecond, zero milliseconds, zero, 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 zero. So by breaking it up like this, it's it's not blocking the main thread. And then we then we start loading our buildings. We got the barn, then we got the house, and then we got the furniture, that little table. And all of these, it's basically zero or one millisecond, so it's not it's not blocking the main thread for any significant amount of time. Uh, we got all of, all of our oranges, zero 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 one zero zero. So uh, then the NPC, and then we have those little. Uh, oh, what are those? Oh, those are the little. Um, these little yellow things on the sides of the barn. I just put them in their etc. group. Um, so. Basically, we're now we're able to load things without blocking. Let's actually um, change our delay because it, that's loading, but it's still loading pretty slow. We want it to be almost instant. So now we change it from we change it from 100 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. So we should be able to add 100 things a second. So let's click go. So wow, that's that was really fast, and we could still see things loading, and we didn't block. The main thread for any significant amount of time, so we're still we were still getting 60 frames per second, so that's cool. Um, so basically, uh, what I didn't mention is now the groups are uh, configurable with the with the plugin. So this order here matters. So if you look at our world, 
we'll want things to load in a certain order. So for instance, if we add the uh, oranges and the Coke cans and the NPC before the terrain is loaded, then those things are just going to fall through the ground and fall off into nothing. So we want to make sure the terrain is loaded first. And we also want to load the furniture and the buildings before that, because what if the NPC starts walking around and it's like, in this area where this barn is and then it loads the barn it's gonna it's gonna break the game because the NPC is gonna be inside here so we want to load things in a certain order so basically the order I'm using right now is to load the terrain first then the buildings then the furniture then the plants and then the items then the NPCs and then etc just little details that don't matter like the little yellow the, the little yellow triangles on the on the barns there. So that's that solves a lot of our problems and uh, yeah so now it, it's configurable should be a lot easier to use. Um, uh, oh it's also fully fully open source. Oh wait wait let me show one other thing. Um, that's cool for loading the whole scene but what if we want to add something to our scene. So let's make a little button that loads items um, asynchronously when we click it because because you're going to want to load things let's see we'll load orange or let's do add orange so now we have a button let's make a uh, pressed event and now we want to load an orange when we click the button Where's the code for that? I don't want to have to type all this out. Um, okay, so basically what this is going to do is we got the orange here. Then we're going to get a random uh, X, Y, and Z position. Um, and then we're going to use scene loader, load scene async with callback. And it's just going to call. And then when it finishes loading, it will call the callback here, which will then add the uh, orange to the, the scene and then it will give it its random position or it, well, first we get the the uh, scene tree and then we add it at the position and then we just add the child to the scene so uh, let's see if that works um, okay so let's run it let's let's load the scene normally okay so now when we click add orange it should add an orange unless I mess something up Okay, cool. So it is working. It's it's adding it down there, and it's doing it all asynchronously. So there's a little pile of oranges. Our NPC just, NPC just ran over. So that's cool. So now we can use this to load things at runtime without blocking the main thread. So cool. Um, uh, as I was mentioning before, you can find this on the Godot Asset Store, Godot Async Loader, and... Uh, it's fully open source, MIT licensed. You can find the code at, at uh, github.com slash immersive RPG slash Godot async loader. And if you have any problems, uh, file a bug report, set up some issues. There's a lot of stuff we can do to make this even better. Like, for instance, um, instead of, where is it? At the, instead of having a sleep here where we sleep for whatever milliseconds between what, whatever adding, we should be able to just measure and add stuff when the game's idle. What else? Oh, it would be nice to have a load uh, progress bar kind of loading thing while, so we can have stuff load without showing all that to the user and then it'll, it'll show the scene when it's done. Um, there's a lot of usability problems I want to fix because like this is a, when we add the orange here, it's a little, a little ugly. I need to clean this up. And whatnot. Um, so if right now I'm working about half time on this, on a immersive RPG. So if you want to help out, I have added a Patreon page. So if you go to patreoncom RPG, you can donate. For right now, I just have a very simple add three bucks, add three bucks, so I can uh, help make. So you can help me make the game, make videos, tutorials, and plugins and whatnot. Um, leave a comment. Um, let me know if you guys, uh, if you guys want to see anything else. So hopefully you guys will like this video. I will see you later.